It's, it's been Tech Futures at Finnovate Europe, and I'm joined by Jean-Pierre Slyman of uh, N26. How are you? Good, and you, Paul? Excellent. I'm very well, very well, thank you. Have you been enjoying the conference so far? Um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, been arrived uh, yesterday and, um, yeah, enjoyed the, the different um, conferences I saw and uh, discussed with some vendors. So, yeah, very nice so far. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, just to get started, I'd like to give a quick introduction to yourself then and, and your role then at N26. Yep, sure. So, my name is Jean-Pierre Sleiman. I um, work for N26, joined three years ago. I'm, I'm head of uh, digital operations, which means I support our operations department, which includes customer service. Um, with digital data, AI, and automation uh, initiatives. And uh, before this, I, I worked on similar topics as a consultant in, in a large retail bank. Excellent. Excellent. You're here speaking on a panel about AI and banking then. Um, one of the big talking points recently in AI has been chat GPT, generative uh, AI coming in. I guess, in terms of financial services, how disruptive is that technology potentially going to be? And uh, should banks be looking more at that kind of technology? Yeah. It's a very good question. We discussed it briefly in the panel as well. Um, I think it's amazing. We all agree uh, what this kind of technology, generative AI in general, can do um, with text, also images, videos, everything. Um, and we're already seeing some, some uh, use cases emerging. We're seeing like, um, that it can be used to help developers, for instance, with their code. It can summarize articles. It can yeah, uh, answer complex questions, taking into account context, etc. Um, but I think we're also starting to see the limits, basically. Uh, and like we now can, can find countless examples of, of um, AI hallucinations, basically, or uh, irrelevant or inconsistent answers to questions, uh, which kind of show that it's, it's currently difficult to um, use these technologies for a business purpose without human supervision. Um, and so for me, I would, um, if I had to summarize it, I think it's, it's, it's a last mile um, problem that we're facing now. So we have, a good, uh, we have good demonstrators of what AI can do um, in terms of taking into account complex inputs, getting, um, collecting, let's say, data from everywhere, and then synthesizing into a, uh, an output. It can be a text, an image, a video, as, as I said. Um, so it's a good demonstrator of all this chain and all these components. Uh, but we still need to figure out, OK, now how do we apply this in a business context, especially in financial services where we have um, very high expectations in terms of accuracy, in terms of compliance. And so I think now we'll be uh, at the very first, I think end of last year, we were very, very optimistic. Now in the at least financial services area, we're very pessimistic. Some banks already said that they will never use this. Um, I think we'll get to a third step, which will be a little bit in between where all the stakeholders, us financial institutions, regulators, maybe third parties will sit and now start to think, okay, where can we apply this uh, kind of technologies in a secure and a compliant way? Excellent, excellent. And, and conversational AI has been around for a while now in terms of like chatbots and things like that. Um, given how quickly the space that evolves, so is there any kind of new developments there that you can tell us about as well? Um, yeah, I think it will relate to the, to the, the question just before. I think the, um, one of the very interesting things that we see emerging in conversational AI is something called large language models, LLMs. So it's, uh, it's one of the components of ChatGPT, for instance, and it basically enables to um, take into account more complex inputs from, uh, from the human users um, and take into account more contextual, let's say, uh, inputs given, and also manage conversations that might shift, jump from a topic to another, and basically manage this, this whole complexity with more complex and powerful models. Um, so I think, yeah, this is something that will, uh, that is starting to be applied in the conversational uh, AI area, and it's definitely, yeah, one of the next big things, if not one of the current big things. Yeah, <laughs> um, So you've got Neon at N26, so it's your own chatbot. Um, with my experience with chatbots, sometimes you know requests can be quite uh, niche um, in terms of what they're asking, and some people obviously still prefer being able to speak to a human. But I mean, what kind of a success have you had with that? Have you been able to kind of like tackle some of these like niche um, elements as well of yours? Um, no, definitely. So um, we started working on conversational AI at N26 uh, Bitcoin four years ago, um, and at that time it was at some point overhyped and then overlooked, like kind of a bumpy road for the technology. But we kept believing in it. We kept um, investing time and effort to, uh, because we could see the potential. Because yes, there are niche um, questions, especially in financial services, but there are also um, 
more basic situations where we can basically provide an answer without a human. And so we um, built like several bots that are now uh, dealing with customers directly on a day-to-day -day basis in five languages. We managed to integrate to our systems, which means that um, they can, they know like some characteristics of our customers. They can also act sometimes, trigger some actions directly um, if the customer requests it. And, um, and yeah, as I said, in, uh, managing millions of conversations a year, um, automating a third of them. So I think it's pretty amazing achievements and it's still progressing. So yeah, no, I see a pretty bright future for this kind of technologies. Excellent, excellent. How do banks like such as yourself then ensure accuracy when they're developing this kind of technology? Of course, yeah, accuracy is super important. As I said before, um, we're in a highly regulated uh, industry. Uh, we have also customers with, with very high, ex um, like uh, who expect a lot from us, very high expectations, um, especially as we're dealing with something that is very important for them, which is their funds. And so um, I think we need to, to ensure accuracy and that what we, anything we provide to the customers is relevant. Um, I think we need to think um, about AI as an operating model. It's not just a fancy tech thing that can do amazing stuff. Um, it's something that requires a pretty um, clear like governance, pretty clear roles and responsibilities, mixing and um, different areas, sometimes external vendors, sometimes not, but at least internal tech companies and IT, product and business teams. Um, certainly compliance at some point to make sure that everything we do is, is uh, like uh, according to the rules. And then um, what I would really like to insist on, I think what is super important is to um, also take into account what happens after. So releasing a nice bot, okay, this is cool, but it's just the beginning of the story. In the end, your um, internally, your company will change. The tech will change, the products will change, the people will change. Externally, things will also change. The economic context will change. The customers, they will change, etc., etc. And uh, whatever AI uh, and conversational AI in particular you will um, release, it will need to remain relevant. And to do this, you need to put in place controls. You need to put in place mechanisms that enable you to audit, make sure that whatever you provide as an AI output is relevant to the users and correct if needed and correct fast. So if you detect something wrong, you can correct it in a matter of hours or days maximum. And I think this is what enables the, to, to, to remain relevant and accurate. Excellent, excellent. And just to finish off then, do you see a future where all digital interactions you know, can be fully automated by an AI? And could you just have a conversation with an AI chatbot and you know, not even know that you're speaking to an AI or speaking to another human? Well, I think financial services are a complex um, space as a whole. Um, it's, it's, First of all, it's, it's difficult, and there are many niche problems that can, that can occur as a, as a user, B2B or B2C. Um, and second, uh, it's, a, it's a, an industry where the relationship is very important. In the end, like, um, it will make a big difference whether you have a good relationship with your bank or financial institution or not. It will be a, a, a major criteria to, uh, to decide to stay or leave. And uh, for these two reasons, um, I am pretty convinced that we will always need um, humans in the loop to deal with these very complex uh, issues or very ad hoc um, niche problems um, and to create and maintain this, uh, this uh, relationship and also commercial relationship. Um, now, I'm also convinced that these human interactions will more and more be assisted and augmented with uh, AI with recommendations on um, the best resolution path or on the best product or recommendation for the customer. And to yeah, also answer the last part of your questions, of your question, sorry. Um, I believe in transparency, so I think that whenever we should be very uh, clear when uh, the users are interacting with a machine or with a human. Great, well thank you for this, taking the time to speak with us, Jean-Pierre. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.